Phyllis Bennis is an American writer, activist, and political commentator, focusing mainly on issues related to the Middle East and the United Nations. She is a strong critic of Israel and the United States and a leading advocate of Palestinian rights. In 2001, she helped found the, and remains active with the US campaign to end the Israeli occupation. She directs the new internationalism project at the Institute of Four Policy Studies. She has served as an informal advisor to several top UN officials on Middle East and UN democratization issues. Phyllis has written Understanding ISIS and the New Global War on Terror, a primer, as well as Before and After, U.S. Foreign Policy and the War on Terror and Challenging Empire, How People, Governments, and the UN Defy U.S. Power. Phyllis Bennis. Thank you very much, and thank you all for listening and for organizing the tribunal. We have been hearing an extraordinary litany of the costs of this war. The costs come in many different forms. On the economic side, this was, of course, a war originally waged on a credit card. But we know now that the cost is in the trillions of dollars when we include the consequences of the war. And that's just in the United States. The consequences economically in Iraq were the complete destruction of the Iraqi economy. The human cost in Iraq were at the tr to the terms of hundreds of thousands of Iraqis killed, more than that injured. If we add in those killed and wounded by the sanctions that led up to this war, we're talking in the millions. On the US side, the impact is almost incalculable, not in numbers, but in actual consequences for soldiers and their families. The social fabric of Iraq was shredded by this war. Sectarianism was put on the rise by this war, by the occupation and the invasion of Iraq. Human rights norms were shredded, were ignored, and normalizing of torture, normalizing of things like what happened at Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo Bay prisons, all of this meant that there was a huge price to be paid on how we and future generations come to understand US obligations to uphold international law and human rights. On the legal side, international law was largely ignored, often sidelined, and again, this set a terrible, dangerous precedent that is now playing out today. Iraq, as we know, had absolutely nothing to do with the attacks of 9-11. But the war in Iraq became the centerpiece of what became known as the global war on terror. And in looking at it in that consequence, we have to understand that the events of 9-11, that horrific crime, did not change the world. What changed the world were the events of 9-12, the day after those horrific attacks, when President Bush announced that the US response to those criminal acts would be to take the world to war. There was, as we know, a global mobilization against going to war in Iraq. On one day, February 15th, 2003, somewhere between 12 and 14 million people thronged capitals in more than 665 cities all around the world to say no to this war. We know that that mobilization and all the others that came before and after were not enough to stop the war in Iraq, to prevent that war. But it did accomplish a number of other things, including preventing a future war against Iran. That's one of the big reasons that George Bush did not go to war against Iran in 2007, was the legacy of those global protests. But if we look at the consequences now, the consequences of that war in Iraq, we are seeing dire consequences. The normalization of war as the appropriate answer to terrorism is perhaps the most dangerous, long-lasting, horrific consequence of the Iraq war. We are now seeing that despite the fact that all of the wars supposedly waged to stop terrorism, whether in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Syria, in Yemen, in Libya, in all of these countries, it has failed. We have refused as a country to acknowledge that failure. We have been at war with terrorism for 15 years, and terrorism is doing just fine. Terrorism is thriving. It's people and cities and countries that are paying the price for this so-called war on terror. We saw the Iraq war destabilize an entire region, fighters coming to Iraq to fight against the US occupation, and then going back over the borders 
to fight elsewhere in all of the wars that are now destabilizing the entire Middle East. We're seeing governments who have continued to use the war in Iraq as an excuse for the repression of their own populations. We see in the very immediate the creation of ISIS. ISIS was born out of the US invasion and occupation of Iraq because it was in a prison run by the United States where US military, military people were arresting and holding Iraqis in the early years of the war. And those Iraqis, many of them were so angry at what they were facing, the kind of torture that we saw at one of those prisons in Abu Ghraib, we didn't see what happened at every one of those prisons, but everyone held in all of those prisons knew that what happened at Abu Ghraib could happen to them. Everyone knew that was a possibility. And it was that recognition of what lay ahead that led some of those prisoners to form the organization in 2004 that would, years later, become renamed as ISIS. We have seen Iraq as central to the global war on terror. And we know that if we continue to refuse to acknowledge the failure of that global war on terror, that the wars will continue, they will escalate, and we face a future of permanent war. We must do something differently. That means starting with an acknowledgement that you cannot go to war against terror. You cannot bomb terrorism out of existence. You can bomb people. You can bomb cities. You can bomb countries. Sometimes you might get lucky and bomb a terrorist. If that person is recognized as a terrorist by everyone, is always doubtful. But you cannot bomb terrorism out of existence. When we know we have been at war with terror for 15 years and terrorism continues to thrive, we know we have to do something different. And that starts with acknowledging what we've done wrong and beginning the process of accountability for those who led us into this criminal enterprise known as the war in Iraq. Thank you.